Magnesium is a vital mineral that helps keep our metabolism running smoothly. We usually get it through our diet. Foods like leafy greens, nuts, and whole grains are good sources, or from oral supplements. But in recent years, topical magnesium products like sprays, oils, lotions, and especially Epsom salt baths have surged in popularity. They're often promoted for a wide range of benefits, from soothing sore muscles to detoxing the body, based on the idea that magnesium can be absorbed directly through the skin. But that leads to the big question, can your body actually absorb magnesium this way? The idea of absorbing magnesium through the skin sounds appealing. Just rub it on or soak in a tub and it'll boost your magnesium levels without a pill. But the science behind this trend doesn't hold up well under scrutiny. Much of the early excitement came from claims by Dr. Norman Shealy, who suggested that magnesium applied to the skin could correct a deficiency within weeks, faster than taking it orally. However, his claims were never backed by published studies or data, just a conference abstract. By the way, I review a lot of supplements here, so subscribe and hit the bell to stay updated, and support me on Coffee if you enjoy the content. Some of the most dramatic case studies of high magnesium exposure involve people nearly drowning in the Dead Sea, which contains very high levels of magnesium and other minerals. While these cases did show spikes in blood magnesium, the increases were due to swallowing the water, not absorbing it through the skin. Lab studies have found that, in theory, a tiny amount of magnesium ions can pass through the skin, mostly through hair follicles, when highly concentrated solutions are used. But in real-world conditions, the evidence just doesn't stack up. In one controlled study, participants used a magnesium-rich lotion several times a day, but researchers saw no change in their magnesium levels. Another study testing a protective magnesium cream also found no sign of magnesium entering the bloodstream. So what's going on? Why is it so hard to get nutrients through the skin? The answer lies in the skin's design. Its main job is to keep things out. It protects us from bacteria, toxins, and even beneficial substances like nutrients. The outer layer is made of tightly packed dead skin cells and lipids, creating a tough, water-repelling barrier. This layer blocks most large or water-soluble molecules from getting through. Even if something does make it past this outer layer into the deep layers, this doesn't mean it reaches the bloodstream. It might just hang out in the skin or get broken down before it can do anything in the body. For substance to be absorbed through the skin, it needs the right chemistry. It must be small, fat-soluble, and uncharged. That's why drugs like nicotine patches or hormone creams work. They're designed to meet these strict criteria. But magnesium? It's a water-soluble mineral that's far too charged to pass pass through the skin easily. The same goes for most vitamins, amino acids, and minerals. They're either too big, too water-soluble, or both. Herbal products have an even harder time as their active ingredients are often large, complex molecules that simply aren't suited for skin absorption. Regardless, any real medical claims about topical magnesium should come down to solid evidence from human studies. So let's take a look at what the research actually tells us. One of the most common claims is that magnesium oils or baths can relieve sore muscles or cramps. The theory is that magnesium helps relax muscle fibers and nerves, so applying it directly to the painful area should give fast relief. A few small studies have tried to explore this. In one, people with fibromyalgia sprayed magnesium chloride on their arms and legs and reported slightly improved symptoms. Another study involved kidney disease patients with nerve pain in their feet. Again, those who used the magnesium spray said their symptoms felt a bit better over time. But here's the catch. These were tiny pilot studies, and none of them used a placebo control. That means we can't say whether magnesium actually helped or if people just felt better because they enjoyed the coolness of the spray. And when it comes to healthy people, no studies have shown that topical magnesium does anything at all for muscle pain. Even with oral magnesium supplements, clinical studies have found that they don't do much for muscle cramps. So it's unlikely that spraying or rubbing it on your skin would be any better. In short, if topical magnesium helps muscle pain, the effect is probably small and maybe more due to the relaxing act of rubbing sore muscles or using a cooling spray or soaking in a warm bath than the magnesium itself. 
Magnesium is also sometimes marketed for skin health with claims it can help eczema, acne, psoriasis, or simply leave your skin feeling softer. These claims are a bit more plausible since they don't depend on magnesium getting into your bloodstream. It just needs to work on the surface of the skin. One small study looked at people with eczema soaking in water with concentrated dead sea salts, which are high in magnesium and other minerals. Those participants did see some improvement in their symptoms. But the Dead Sea is full of different minerals, not just magnesium, so we can't say for sure which minerals cause the benefit. And Epsom salts, which are the most common magnesium bath product, only contain one mineral, magnesium sulfate. So we don't really know if it'll have the same effect as the Dead Sea salts. Practically speaking, an Epsom salt bath might feel good or help exfoliate dry skin, but there's no strong evidence it can treat any skin condition. Magnesium is often promoted as a natural way to relax or sleep better, and some people rub magnesium on their feet or back before bed, hoping it'll help them unwind. But is there any real science behind this? Not really. Most of the studies linking magnesium to better sleep or reduced anxiety are based on oral supplements, not creams or sprays. So far, no clinical trials have tested whether topical magnesium improves sleep. If a warm bath or a cool spray helps you sleep, it's probably because those sensations are relaxing on their own, not because of the magnesium. If you're serious about getting the benefits of magnesium, your best bet is to take it orally. There are plenty of supplement options out there, and each type offers different levels of absorption and potential effects. Let's break down some of the most common ones and what they're good for. First, we have magnesium oxide. This is one of the cheapest and most widely available forms. However, it has very poor absorption, so your body doesn't get much magnesium from it. In fact, it's better known for helping with constipation than for boosting your magnesium levels. Next up is magnesium citrate. This form is combined with citric acid, which helps the body absorb it more easily. It's also fairly affordable and widely available, making it a good all-purpose option for most people who just want to top up their magnesium levels. Magnesium glycinate is a step up. It's bound to the amino acid glycine, which makes it gentler on the stomach and better absorbed than citrate. This form is often chosen for its calming effects and is commonly used to help with anxiety or promote relaxation. It does cost a bit more, but some people still find it worth it. Then there's magnesium malate, which combines magnesium with malic acid, a compound found in fruits like apples. It's well absorbed and sometimes used for muscle fatigue or soreness. Some early research suggests it might help with conditions like chronic fatigue syndrome, though the evidence is still limited. One of the newer players is magnesium threonate. What makes this form unique is that it can cross the blood-brain barrier, which means it may have more direct effects on the brain. That's why it's often marketed for memory and cognitive support. It's the most expensive form by far, and while many people promote it for brain health, research is still emerging. There are a few other forms you might come across, like magnesium lactate or magnesium taurate, but they're less commonly used. Then there's the topical forms, magnesium sulfate, which you'll recognize as Epsom salts, and magnesium chloride, the type found in most sprays and oils. So what's the bottom line? If you want real evidence-backed benefits from magnesium, oral supplements are the way to go. Topical magnesium, whether it's in a spray, lotion, or bath, might feel nice, and the routine of using it may be relaxing, but the science just doesn't support it as an effective way to boost magnesium levels or treat any health conditions. In the end, a warm Epsom salt bath or a soothing massage with magnesium oil might offer some momentary comfort, but don't expect it to work magic. Hi, I'm Dr. Brian Young. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Feel free to share them in the comments down below. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. And if you know someone who could benefit from this, please share it with them. Finally, if you enjoy what we do and want to learn more, consider supporting us on Coffee, and be sure to check out our other socials as well.